You're listening to the Greek's Gridiron, live with Ethan Haristadoulou. Good morning to my West Coast and good afternoon to my East Coast people. Welcome back to another episode of the Greek's Gridiron. And today, discussing more draft grades, we are talking the San Francisco 49ers in their draft class. No first round pick, but they had a litany of day three selections and they had three day two picks as well. So a lot to break down. My 49ers fans, comment down below. Let me know who you're excited to see perform in this year's draft class. Maybe you have a guy you really like. Maybe someone you're kind of curious why the team even went after and drafted. I definitely have one in day three we'll talk about right off the jump too. But uh, comment down below. Let me know how you guys are feeling about this draft class and make sure you like and hit that sub- or, and hit that subscribe button. Yes. So uh, let's dive right into the thick of things. We'll start with day three. We'll jump into day number two, and then we'll discuss day number one. I know there obviously was not a selection because you guys made a trade last year for Trey Lance that included this year's first round pick. But as if you have been following, as I've been doing, I include picks that even teams don't necessarily have anymore in the grading if it's like a first round selection or something significant like that because typically the first round picks are involved in something significant for the team so if they've been traded away I like to include that in the draft grade because I do think it's an important piece to the puzzle of the draft class and it helps kind of explain and and help the draft class almost like take mold in a sense so starting with day number three round seven pick 262 Brock Purdy out of Iowa State I gave this one a D, and here's why. I understand what Brock Purdy, as a four-year starter, brings to the table. Uh, You know, he's a leader. He's fairly accurate inside the numbers. I mean, if you watch him play, I do like what he brings to the table. Don't get me wrong. I I actually, one thing I really do like about him is his his touch ability on his throws. He is a very good touch passer, and again, I like what he brings to the table as a quarterback. This is more so about me just not really understanding why you're going to waste your seventh round final selection on a quarterback who, if you're all in on Trey Lance, I mean, yeah, I guess he's a body that you could use in camp, but like Brock Pert, I mean, I don't know. I, I guess it was like the final selection of the draft. So maybe that's what it is. Like, it doesn't really matter. You want to just get Brock Purdy locked in for a guaranteed deal. But if there was someone you really liked as like a priority UDFA, I just don't quite understand this selection here. I don't see how you feel like you had to have Brock Purdy over another guy who could add depth at any position you may have needed. It just does not really make sense to me. If it really just boiled down to he was the best player left on their board and that's what they wanted to make sure they locked up and had as like a camp body or something like that or just, you know, see what he brings to the table, so be it. I just personally don't really like this pick. This is like this is the lowest grade in the entire draft class class that I gave. I just it almost feels like a wasted pick. I feel like there has to have been somebody else who you knew was going to end up being a free agent, obviously, that you like really wanted to have on your team. And you could have been using, like, willing to use that seventh round pick on. It's kind of a nitpicky thing, I will admit, but uh, just not a great pick, by, in my opinion. I just think that you could have went somewhere else, more positional need, someone that you really wanted to have, who maybe was an underactive free agent who went to another team because you chose Brock Purdy instead. That's kind of how I look at that. Next up, we have Tariq Castro Fields, cornerback out of Penn State. I gave this one a B minus, an above average pick here. I really like this one here. He has good size at 6'1, 197, good speed as well, 438. And he was actually a fourth round grade, and they got him in the sixth round. So this is a really good value pick on top of he comes with some premier size and athleticism to boot. He also plays with solid play strength as well, and he comes with valuable moldable traits at the cornerback position something that you know when you're picking late in the stages of the draft and you're especially at something like a cornerback position where cornerback takes a lot of a lot of confidence and an ability to play it, i think that cornerback is one of the hardest positions to play in sports because it's literally a guessing game of of you know how well can i stick to this guy that's across from me you're not knowing what he's going to do and you have to be able to shadow him as best as possible he comes with all the traits you need. It's just a matter of can they mold this guy. But he, he, he does he gets noted for lacking like the sticky coverage that you want to see from a corner. That is something that might end up being a problem, especially when you're playing some of those better receivers in the NFL. Obviously, this guy's going to be at the beginning a rotational stage guy, but you're hoping someone with his upside could turn into a little bit more than that. Uh, he does also 
have a lot of tape of him getting burned by double moves and that is definitely a concern if you can't compete with the double moves at the college level just wait until you see what some of these receivers in the nfl can do it gets even crazier the whole level gets taken up a notch but i do like his potential and what he brings to the table and if there's a team that i know who can get even just solid cornerback play that's like better than the actual player itself i trust in san francisco i i love what they do on defense over there i respect the hell out of it because they're they're able to take a lot of guys and fit them into places and get the most out of them. Even if they're not necessarily as good as the sum of the parts of the defense, they still get good play. And I like the selection for them here. It's also a team need going after cornerback, getting some depth. Excellent job there. Next up, we're looking at, I believe it's Kalia Davis. If I'm pronouncing that wrong, definitely let me know down below the defensive tackle out of UCF. This is kind of, I give it a C minus. It's like a will C selection, what he turns into. He doesn't have a ton of tape the last couple of years. He dealt with an injury in October of 2021 and he sat out 2020. So not a ton of playing time the last couple of years. And that's probably the biggest knock to this is, especially in football, I feel like there's just so much you're missing out on when you're not playing that it, it can definitely hurt a player. But he brings a ton of potential upside. I will give him that. He's someone who can fit into multiple spots up front. And that's something that I could see the 49ers loving and definitely trying to take advantage of. He provides scheme versatility very quick off the snap, which if you look at what San Francisco does, I feel like that is like a tendency of the 49ers is just a very quick off the snap defensive line. And he slips through gaps really effectively. Again, I gave it a C- minus because I'm a little bit concerned about the amount of time he's missed. Obviously, it's not injury stuff, but just, you know, you missed a whole season in 2020. Then he got hurt in October. It's just a lot of time to not be playing football more recently. And so with that, C-. minus. I like the pick. It's a good need. Uh, you know, you want to shore up that defensive front. And I feel like there's if there's one thing the 49ers do right, it's def defensive front selections. I like what he brings to the table. Again, he's like a we'll see what happens type of selection there. Then you're looking at Nick Zik, um, Nick Zikel G I Zikel -E, I don't know if that eight uh, that J is silent or not. Not 100 sure how to pronounce that one either. He has size and length to be a left and right tackle, someone who can play fairly well in pass protection. His run game does need a little bit of work, but he is fairly solid in the pass protection side of things. Has really good use of his hands. Some things that scouts are saying about him that, and this is actually something you can kind of see on his tape too. When I went back to try to find some stuff on him, I did find a few things. He plays a little bit too high and a little too upright. It causes leverage concerns. Uh, and apparently he tends to really struggle against some of the power rushers that he went up against. And Lord knows that when you're getting into the NFL, power rushers only get stronger. So that is something he's going to have to play for. But it seems like technique and fundamental stuff is where his, his weaknesses really lie. Teachable things at that. I gave this pick a C average type of grade you know the good upside we'll see what he turns into but I do like the selection it's an offensive line is it's not like a super pressing need but it is something that they did need to add a little bit of depth to and I like the selection here then we're looking at Samuel Womack the cornerback out of Toledo I gave this one a B minus it's an above average selection here three-year starter with a ton of playmaking ability he had 41 career pass breakups he shows that ball hawking skill and high-end type of play speed this is a guy that I really really like in the fifth round for the 49ers again above average pick I gave it a B minus he's praised for his ability to read receivers and find the like you know and, and get those hints and whatnot as to what the receiver is doing watching their eyes watching the way they're kind of leaning towards in their heads and whatnot he's someone who isn't going to get lost in like fakes and things like that because he's constantly reading the receiver's body language language and you know facial facial language I guess you could say if that's the right terminology for that but I really like what he brings to the table for the team he is a little bit small though 5'9 189 pounds play strength is obviously going to be a concern but I mean the guy is just he, he's shown so much playing on the inside as a corner that this is a really good potential upside selection here he does, though, tend to lose his feet. If you watch some of the game tape from Toledo, there are some plays where he tends to slip up and just completely fall flat. So that is one thing that he's going to have to, you know, you can't be slipping up. If you, if you slip up and you fall in the NFL, it's a death sentence for the defense right there. If you're on your man and you slip and you leave him wide open, forget about it. So just something that he needs to work on his footwork, I guess, you know, keeping his feet underneath him rather than on the side of him as he's hitting the ground there. But I do like this pick here. B minus for the pick in the fifth round. Excellent job there. Then the final, well, first of the day three, but final of my talking points here, the Spencer Burford guard from Texas San Antonio State selection. 
I like this one. This is a C plus, or excuse me, a B, a B minus pick. I'm reading different letters here. B minus selection. Again, another above average pick here. They lost Lincoln Tomlinson in free agency. You need to try to find someone who can maybe potentially replace the production and what he could do in that offensive line with the pulling and everything. Cause you know, Lincoln Tomlinson really athletic, a guy who can pull and be effective there. This is a guy that if he pans out well, could be that replacement. Very good athlete with the motor to pair with it. Explosive ability as a pulling guard. He has great length with near 35 inch arms and he's played left tackle, right tackle and left guard predominantly. Scouts do say he needs to work on his footwork a little bit, overall technique, and he needs to put on a little bit of size, but this is exactly the type of selection you want to see them go after, especially like in the later rounds and early parts of day three, where you're hopefully finding someone who could, you know, even if it's not this first year, maybe a year or two down the road, end up being a guy who can fill in and replace that role that Lincoln Tomlinson brought to the table. I like this selection here. Good pick there for sure. For day three altogether, I accidentally read the letter while I was talking about Spencer Burford here, uh, but I am going to give them a C for day three. I do like some of the selections. A few of the selections, like I talked about, I, I'm not a big fan of the Brock Purdy pick, and that kind of weighs down the average for day three with the D. And then when you look at someone, like I said, uh, Kalia Davis, if you're really concerned about him, it's just it, it, a ton of play time missed recently. And that's something that, like, you know, again, we'll see. Overall, though, a solid group of guys. I like what they, you know, th there's some good upside in there. So I do like what some of those players bring to the table. And we'll, you know, again, a handful of guys that we'll just kind of have to see how well they can contribute and how frequently they'll be able to contribute, at least in the early stages of their career. Going into day number two, you're looking at three selections here. And I like the day two group of guys. There's some really good players here. Danny Gray, the wide receiver out of SMU. You're throwing this dude a slant or a drag route and just watch the man go because he has that I'll take it to the house type speed. This is someone who, you know, will take that slant 70 yards a la like Jamar Chase this past season the way you'd see that because he has that play speed, not only in shorts and a t-shirt, but also in game speed as well. I love to see his highlights. It's a really fun thing to watch. If you have not watched him, my 49ers fans, go check him out. See what he brings to the table because he does bring a ton of quick speed quick speed and also like quick twitch explosive ability with just the way he moves you know he fills his routes up with shakes and shimmies here to lose the defender he plays really loose awesome rack ability and he's someone who can also bring value to the kick and punt return as well so even early on if he's not finding you know and carving out an, a role initially in the wide receiver group he's someone who can help out on special teams as well right out of the gates he brings that type of big play versatility someone who could take it to the house type threat like to see that I gave the pick a B, really good selection here. He does need to put on a little bit of extra muscle because, you know, some of these corners, man, they seem to be getting bigger and faster at times. You want to be able to fight off those guys. And he does have a tendency to drop some footballs. He, he suffers from, like, those just, like, loss of focus drops, ones that you, you almost, like, leaves you kind of scratching your head, like, what happened there? So... Overall, though, good pick there. I like the selection. Then Tyrion Davis Price, the running back out of LSU. This is a B minus above average pick. He's a good size speed combo guy. He accelerates and cuts like someone that's actually smaller than his actual size. He's not afraid to drop and run through a defender. He brings he's he's somewhat of like the total type package running back you want to look for for someone who's like kind of a somewhat every down type of back. And he does have the possibility to be that type of guy. However, he can be fairly inconsistent, according to some of the scouts. Uh, his patience is not quite where it needs to be. If you watch some of the, like, not his highlights, but, like, actual tape of games for LSU, and I, this was noted in his, in his like, scouting notes, and I kind of went back to see if I could find some instances myself. And I did find a couple where he is just, like, outright running into his own offensive lineman. So that is something he needs to work on, just being a little bit more patient, opening up his eyes a bit more and allowing running lanes to develop in front of him rather than just trying to force a running lane to happen. So patience will definitely serve him well, especially in the NFL. You know, some people think, oh, you know, you got to be quick in the NFL. Well, uh, you, you watch the days of when Le'Veon Bell was at his peak. Uh, very patient runner, really good vision. And he, he was allowing the offensive line to open up those highways for him to go sprinting through. And it, it, it'll serve you well in the NFL, especially with the traits that he brings to the table. 
Other than that, though, again, another solid to above average selection here. I gave it a B minus. I do like the pick. I can understand where they're trying to go with the selection here. You've been running a kind of like committee backfield so far due to injuries and whatnot. And no one's ever really been like the premier number one guy out of the backfield for San Francisco. So bringing in someone like Tyrion Davis Price kind of at least somewhat shows you're attempting to try to fill that void and find someone who can be a more steady, maybe every first and second down guy and get like a change of pace third, but there were third, third, oh my goodness, third down back <laughs> stutter, stutter, stutter. But I do, I do like the pick. I understand where it's coming from here. Then we have ourselves Drake Jackson, the edge rusher from USC. I gave this a B plus. I think it's a really good pick for the team here. He's disruptive. He's athletic. He shows that, he, you know, when it comes to fighting through the edge, he has that motor and that ability to push his way through and get to the quarterback here. He, some scouts are saying they want to see him put on a little bit more size. And I guess that's a, you know, that's a fair criticism. You definitely want to have a, a big man that can also rush and move on the outside there. Um, and his rush counters, I guess, are not necessarily the best per se. I'm not an expert on defensive line work here, especially with the hands and things like that. That's definitely something I'm kind of just like working on, trying to study and gain some knowledge in here. But the scouts are saying it definitely needs some work. Uh, but I do really, really like the selection. And when you look at like just how like, I've already kind of talked about it, too. When you look at how good the 49ers have been in, in recent years of late developing pass rushers and just like defensive front linemen altogether from the left side all the way to the right side, they have done an excellent job there and bringing in someone like Drake Jackson to learn from, you know, Nick Bosa and company there. I like the pick. And this is someone who comes with a lot of upside and I think could work out really well for the team. Overall, for day two, I give the grade a B. I like the selections that they had here in day two. I think some really solid and really good upside potential here with this group of guys. And then for day number one, there was obviously no actual draft pick because last year, the San Francisco 49ers traded a bunch of, what was it, three first round selections here. I have a sneeze coming on, so I'm sorry if I'm like, all right, the sneeze is gone. Excuse me. Now, like I said, no first round selection. They traded uh, traded away the pick, a handful of first rounders for Trey Lance last season. Here's the grade that I give for this. Even though they didn't make the pick, it's still something that altered the franchise significantly. I think it's worth talking about in this draft grade. You didn't have that pick because you made a significant move last season. I gave it a B plus, and here's why. I understand making a move for a quarterback especially a franchise altering one. And you know what? Five years down the road, I could eat my words on this here. I just think it is an awful lot to give up. And there is a track record of it not necessarily working out to give out such a large haul for first round quarterbacks. I, I you know, the, the Washington Commanders, when they went after Robert Griffin III, comes to mind. Uh, that's probably one of the more recent ones where, you know, a team just gave a away a boatload of first round selections and the quarterback situation doesn't necessarily work out. Uh, it, it's not that I, I don't like the idea of them going after the guy that they really like. It's just how raw Trey Lance was coming out of college and things are sounding good coming out of the 49ers camp right now. I'm excited to see what he does I just think that, you know, you picked him third last year. He needed to sit for a year. And while I'm all for letting quarterbacks develop before they come in and play, like you look at what happened with Patrick Mahomes, Aaron Rodgers, you let a quarterback sit for some time. It typically benefits them because things are a lot slower once they start to get the, you know, they start to get their first starts in. I'm all for it. It's just an awful lot to give up. An awful lot to give up. And they gave up a first-round pick in next year's draft as well. And we'll have to talk about that in next year's draft. I gave it a B-plus for now. I could eat my words, and this could be an A-plus move anyways. Maybe Trey Lance becomes the best quarterback in the NFL in the next couple of years, and I totally eat my words on that. Of course I can. However, for now, where things stand, what we've seen so far from him, and you know, not necessarily knowing what's going on in the future, I'm fine with a B-plus. So day one gets a B-plus there because their selection was traded away in last year's draft. Overall, for the entirety of their draft grade, from day one to day number three, I elected to settle at B-. minus. I really like some of the selections that they made here. There are a couple of guys, and again, I'm not going to say that Brock Purdy weighs down this entire draft class here. That would be absolutely ridiculous. I, the, the letters I settle on are typically just the averages of everything. Like I'm averaging letters as I go through the entire grading system here. So 
B minus is where I sit at. Um, there are some selections in day three that do kind of weigh down, you know, the draft class a little bit. And I understand that, you know, typically day one and day two, obviously they tip those picks typically, you know, serve more of an impact on the team, but we're talking four players to the other five selections here. I think we should be, or what is this? Five, one, two, three, four, five, six selections. Excuse me. I just, I, I want to make sure that we are discussing everything in its entirety. I, I understand that, you know, the, the day two and, you know, the early day three guys might have more of an impact than the late day three guys. You know, I get it, but I like a B minus. I think it's a good grade for the team. There's a lot of potential upside with this team. And yeah, again, could I eat my words and this draft class be a B plus a minus type group, a, a, a at the best a plus. Yeah, of course. But B minus for right now with what we know, I like it. And these are way too early grades anyways. So I wouldn't take them too, too serious or too, too much to heart. I appreciate you guys for watching again, 49ers fans. Let me know down below. How are you guys feeling about this draft class? Who do you like and dislike from the groups? I will catch you guys in the next video. Enjoy the rest of your Tuesdays. Have a good one.